Right, hello everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. Um, this is my very first time doing anything like this, so uh, please bear with me. Um, I'm not great at technology and I'm certainly not great at trying to show people how I do things. Anyway, so as you can see, you have the outline here of my lion all ready to go. Today we're going to be doing the eye. At least we're going to try and do the eye. Um, here you can see I have my my pad which has the image on it and also a printed image there as well. So we are going to try and do my best to so you can see how I work. Everybody works differently. Everybody likes different things. So I'm using a frame, it's a clip frame, these little bits here, if you can see, move it down, these bits here, they just clip onto the material and clip onto the frame, which makes life so much easier, it means we do not have to sew the material onto the backing. Underneath I have two bits of foam, so I'm felting onto the foam. Um, I'm using two different needles, a ordinary starting needle for um, core wool and a fine needle. Again, everybody has their own preferences at which needle they like to use for different things, so it really is up to you what you use. I'm going to start off with tiny bit of black and I want to just get that pupil which is nice and small ready so I can then go round it. I always start my work with the eye. I think if you can get the eye right then you're 75% there of getting the whole thing to look right. I am a bit of a perfectionist. I am very much into detail and I, to my detriment, I'm into detail. Everything has to be just right. Um, but of course it's never perfect. We, we, we're never perfect and as artists we always wish we could do better. Um, but we can only do our best and like I have said to many people if your work is better than the last piece of work you did then you've cracked it you've you've gone on that extra level and that's all you need to do don't worry about anybody else's work or how good anybody else is you just have to be better than your previous piece of work Okay, so we've got the start of the eye. We've got that nice black pupil there. And we can tone that down a little bit later. But for now, it helps me just get a grip of how, where it is and how much room I have left. Now, this particular lion, most lions have orangey eyes. This one has quite greeny eyes. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of it's cream really nice cream color um, I have little tiny little packets which I use for eyes of 40 different colors which is quite useful quite handy saves you getting lots of big bits up so we're going to use this as a base again with my f with my bigger needle this time so I can just get it in there it does make a bit of a noise onto the back of this foam so we just poke it in through right you know how to do this bit so we just go around the eye now the image that I'm using 
has been transferred onto the fabric using a material called trace down. Um, it's widely used in the artist world and it's a lot easier than tracing paper as you only have to use go around your image once not three times so it's so much easier quicker and quite cost effective it's available pretty much everywhere amazon and ebay are the two places that i use to buy my my bits from um as i don't have any shops locally that do anything remotely associated with needle felting so everything comes from amazon or ebay so that's the first little bit of our base do around the other side and as you can see i'm just just giving it a good old shove in so now normally this is my art room we're using today normally i use my lap i use my art room during the day to do my pencil drawings and my commission work and then in the evening normally in front of the telly on the sofa doing my needle felting but obviously that is not very easy trying to set up a camera when you're on a sofa <laughs> so i have moved my pencil stuff out of the way just for this and hope it uh hope it works and hope it comes out and she says now we're losing the pupil a little bit but that that doesn't matter because we're, we're going to add to it a bit later now we don't want it sticking out too much because Obviously, if you look at the pictures really carefully, which I will add to this at some point somehow, uh, as I said, technology is not my best best bet. The eyes are quite sunken into the skull, so we need to make sure that it doesn't stick out like a big sore thumb, and then it will look weird. So I'm just going to add just a tiny little bit more to this corner just to make it even i'm not worried about the lines that i've used to do the outline with because obviously the felt will cover them up they're just there to guide you to where everything should be they're not there for you to cheat they're just there to guide you so you know exactly where the nose should be and exactly where the eyes should be and of course it makes life so much easier than just having a blank canvas. So that's, this is the fine needle again. I'm just giving it a little bit of a, a fluff, just so it looks, looks even. Now I've stirred at the picture, my reference picture, and I like to do that first and like I said he has quite a light eye there is a little bit of orange but there's also quite a bit of earthy green and this is probably the closest I'm going to come to that as nothing's ever direct science so I'm going to use that little bit with the fine needle of earthy green over the top of that lovely base colour. Now I don't want too much as you can see it is just a few hairs. I just want to give the illusion of that green without making it stand out like a big sore thumb. We can get too carried away with colour sometimes and as a person that loves their detail I have learnt less is more. You can always add, and it's a pain taking it away. 
so I've added a little bit of green there as you can see and it's changed the colour quite dramatically I'm just going to lift the spare fibres and just take them away shove them back in the packet because we don't like to waste anything and then just tidy it up a little bit so now our eye is already looking a little bit more two-dimensional or less two-dimensional more 3d it's getting a little bit of shape now i'm not going to move my camera because i'm not as i said i'm not technologically minded and it's going to take me forever to set it back so but as i can see from my reference photo the pupil is a little bit higher and a little bit bigger so i'm just going to add just a tiny bit more black to that pupil that's it and i'm just going to expand it just a little bit again don't get carried away with expanding things or making things bigger because you can then end up having them too big okay so i'm just I'm using the fine needle again which is a bit slow but it helps you to stop going too far and making everything too big so I'm just going to bring that pupil up a little just to there we go there it is sometimes it's just a case of a bit of perseverance and and you get there in the end okay oh, again that. oh, that's my pad that I'm using as a reference making bleeping noises I apologize for that and if you can hear a whirring in the background that will be my tumble dry as it is raining outside okay so Trim the excess off, and there we go. It's got a little bit there to trim. So, yeah, really need to get one of those puffer things I've seen other people using in the art world, just to save me blowing on it. So now I have a little bit of brown in there as well, a little bit of orangey brown, which might don't seem to have if you bear with me i'll get some so i have all of my eye stuff all neatly wrapped up in in uh, according to tone and color so i think i think that's a good brand for the eye and it's just a tiny fleck that goes across the top of the eye and it's just underneath the light which we were going to put in a bit so I'm going to lay it across the top this is going to be too much but we're not going to use it all and I'm just going to just poke a little bit in across the top of course the one bonus with needle felting as opposed to painting or drawing it's easy if you make a mistake you can just take it back up and start again so you can experiment to your heart's content without worrying at whether it's right or wrong and there is no wrong at the end of the day art is how it makes you feel and how it makes the onlooker feel it's not about whether it's technically correct although being a perfectionist I can get a bit funny like that but it's about how it makes you feel when you look at it does it make you smile does it make you want to cry 
Does it make you sad? Well, that would depend on what picture you're doing. Hopefully this will make you think what wonderful creatures and let's hope we don't kill them off into extinction. So we're going to have a bit of light above that eye. Now I have an ice white, a nice blue ice white. It's got a hint, a hint of blue in it, which is perfect for noses and eyes. And it's very fine and very fluffy and quite difficult, <laughs> she says, quite difficult to control. So I'm going to put the light in just above that brown line that we've just done. Because this is going to be your, your light. I really hope you can see this. I don't know if you can or not. It's very difficult to get the whole thing set up. As I said, I'm not techno. Techno. So I'm going to put quite a bit of that, that white on. And just try and get it over the top of that pupil. So it gives that illusion that the light's coming from the right hand side of the, or the lines left. There you go. It's just changing it just a little bit. And as you can see, that brown hasn't disappeared. It is just a hint. Just there to make you think. I'm just going to put a little bit more out there. That's it. Move that bit around. Shove a little bit more down there. Very technical, shoving it in. There we go. Right. I don't want too much white. Trim that off. Give it a bit of a puff of there. Put the remnants back in my tub. Now it's got it's got a little hint of orange in it. And most lines have orange eyes. And I'm going to use quite a bright, quite a bright orange. And I'm just going to use again the fine, the fine needle, and I'm just going to place it down the bottom, just taking the odd fibre, and it is the odd fibre, up into the eyeball itself. And that is going to help give the eye some depth and a hint of colour without it looking like a dog's dinner hopefully anyway as i said i normally felt on my lap so felting at this angle is a bit is a bit weird for me but as you can see hopefully it's just giving that hint of orange to the eye Poke that white bit in, it's not quite in. Okay, now I'm just gonna go back in again. Let's just take the, the excess fibers off. There we go. Put that little bit back in the bag. Every little bit counts, never waste, never waste anything. Right, I'm going to go back in again. Now this is a black black. If you're artistic, you'll know there are more blacks than whites. You've got browny black, bluey black. Um, but this really is a very deep, deep black black, um, which is perfect for the pupils. And I'm just going to wake that pupil up. And just put a tiny few fibres back over the top. It's a bit difficult to see because you've got that big blob of black fluff that I've just put on. Again, I'm going to go underneath the fibres and just trim off what I don't want. And then I can go back in again with the fine needle and just give it a little tweak. And I've got a stray black fibre here, 
which is going to annoy me. There we go. And I'm just popping the hint of that black pupil on that light because that will give it that little bit more depth. Okay. Right. Now, again with the black, it's a little bit more this time, and I'm going to use my thicker, thicker needle. I'm going to give it a little bit of a twist just to help me along a bit. I'm going to go underneath this eye. We're going to now create the the eyelid, the frame of the eye. Make it look a little bit more than just a blob on a bit of material. And the material I'm using again is a natural linen. Um, again bought from um, eBay. I'm trying out different suppliers at the moment so because linen varies and um, not all linen is the same. This is a heavyweight linen and underneath it's quite dark already so as you can see I'm just just going right around the eye I'm going to do a little bit more in this corner because it comes out to here as you can see but I'm not going to go down all that way with the dark um, but it doesn't matter if I have a little bit of dark underneath so I'm just going to just poke a little bit in there and again we're going to go across the top and he's got quite a big eye socket this boy and it goes right up to this corner and then I can bring it back down again now you can see I'm doing the outside that black pupil suddenly doesn't look very black and it looks very dull which is fine because I can go back in and I can put another little bit of black over the top just to give it that oomph but I won't do that until a bit later I want to frame this eye with its natural socket first and I want to see how much I need to change the eye I'm already thinking I might want to add a little bit more green and a little bit more orange because I'm already losing the the colour with the big black frame that goes around this eye. There we go. This, this goes right into got a big bit that comes down the side of the eye. those fibres up, give them a little bit of a twirl. Now like I said before everybody works differently. This isn't really a tutorial it's more of this is how I work, this is how I do things um, and you're welcome to copy of course and if it works for you then that's brilliant and if it doesn't well, I'm sure you will find the best way that does work for you um, as we are all different uh, I don't want to add any more I've already gone a little bit too high there I'm just going to drop that down a bit okay so I'm going to take the excess off there for a minute oh, drop my scissors it's a good start these are my nail scissors. They're amazing. So much easier because they bend. They have a curve to them, which then makes it really, really good for using on this. I don't then go too deep and take too much off. They are amazing. Okay, so tidy that up a little bit. I've got a few stray fibres sticking up. So we're already starting to look a bit better now I've got a little bit here that I've missed I 
again I'm using the fine needle just to poke into the side a little bit okay and I'm just going to add a little bit more on top of that because I can see the material underneath which is not the idea okay let's just use a thicker one for a minute again this fibre is quite soft I don't know what fibre it is, whether it's tops or whatever else. This is only my fifth felt. So I'm not really up on all of <laughs> what is what. Um, some of my wool is very, very fine and fluffy and difficult to use. And some of it's a little bit coarser and a little bit easier to use. So this is what I would say, I would call this in the middle. It's quite fine, it's quite soft, it's quite easy to use. Right, now, as you can see, the pupil has lost a bit. But this bit here is a purpley grey. And again, I haven't got that, so if you bear with me, I'm just going to press pause and I'm just going to get a few bits. <laughs> 